Hi friends, what's on my mind today? Getting the house ready, uh, slowly but surely, ready for us to leave and go north again to our RV life for a few. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. For a few months, a lot of salitre. Here's some pictures. The kitchen wasn't too bad this year. Apparently the chemical we used last year is working. The dining room was bad, um, but it's all fixed up now. Looking good. Juan's outside now, working on the outside. Well, what else is on my mind today? I'm up here in my bedroom because there's a lot of noise going on downstairs. A couple of guys talking in Spanish as they work. And uh, some chiseling and pounding to get stuff uh, ready to redo from the salitre problems. And uh, Juan is also working on the outside of the house. We may paint the outside of the house if we have time before Lynn and I leave to go north. Which is another month or so. We haven't actually bought a plane ticket yet. Um, I wanted to talk about a number of things today. Uh, I want to start with answering some comments. And when you're building a home if a septic tank is put in, are you able to flush toilet tissue down the toilet? Well, there's this thing in Mexico, and it's an old cultural thing, um, where you're not supposed to flush toilet paper down the toilet. And what a lot of Mexican homes do uh, is they have a trash can beside the toilet, and they put their used toilet paper in the trash can. And while that may sound uh, not optimal in a lot of countries, <laughs> it actually isn't a terrible thing. Uh, once it's, this is kind of disgusting, but let's do it. Once it's dry, it doesn't smell. Um, unlike stepping in what the dog did out in the yard, it's, it seems to be different. Um, there is a reason for doing that, and it's not uh, about the septic tank. It's about an old plumbing system in a lot of parts of uh, many towns in Mexico where the pipes are like this big around, like uh, a, a, a two-inch drain pipe instead of a three- or four-inch drain pipe, or in the United States, a six-inch drain pipe. And so the, the paper will get to a corner or a joint in the plumbing and stop, and then it'll pack in there. And that's why um, a lot of Mexican homes don't put toilet paper in the toilet because it'll plug up their uh, sewage system. It's not about uh, the septic tank. We run into this same thing with regard to um, controlling, maintaining, making sure we don't have problems with septic tanks when we're RVing. And there's a test for toilet paper uh, to make sure that it's septic safe. So if you're an RVer, uh, this is something you need to know. In the United States, we use Angel Soft, and right on the package it says septic safe. Here in Mexico, uh, we buy our toilet paper at Costco, this Kirkland brand uh, Papel Hygienico, and uh, I'm going to show you what the test is. Wait a second, I got to get some water. So I have a jar of water here and uh, some toilet tissue, unused by the way. <laughs> Put that in the water. And shake it up. Now, if you have septic safe toilet paper, it means that it dissolves and doesn't just like clump up in a clump. So what I have here is even after that little bit of shaking, 
totally broken up toilet paper. That's how you tell if you have septic safe toilet paper for your RV or uh, if you're in Mexico with a septic tank. I do have a septic tank system here at my house and I am not hooked up to the city sewer. When I had the house inspected in 2004, I asked the inspector about the uh, expected uh, longevity of a septic tank here in this part of uh, Ahihik where we live. And his reply was they're good for about 15 years. Um, we have a septic tank and the system here is that uh, it's just a, um, I think they call them a registro, and it's it's just a uh, cement uh, box with no bottom in it, and it's not big. I would judge it as half the size of a casket. Um, we used that for 10 years and opened it up when we were building that central part of the house to join our two properties together and uh, looked into it and it wasn't full. Um, it was cleaned out a little bit at that time and that was in 2011. So we're talking about another um, uh, 11 years and um, no problems. And we flush our toilet paper uh, down the toilet. We don't throw Kleenex in the toilet because that doesn't dissolve. And you also have to be careful about uh, putting cleaning chemicals down there. When my maids mop the floors and we use a chemical in there that um, uh, deters the cockroaches from running around in the house. But I don't want that in my septic tank. Um, they pour it in another hole that I have out there that catches rainwater and pumps it through my plumbing system out into the federal zone. Um, so they dump the, the mop water in that um, place where I catch rainwater and pump it out to the federal zone instead of having it flood the living room when it rains really hard here. Uh, how is Amazon deliveries out there? Just curious. Uh, Amazon deliveries are amazing. I order stuff from Amazon um, quite often, and it comes sooner than they predict. So if you order something and it says, yeah, it's going to be here on Wednesday, it'll come on Monday or Tuesday. And it comes right here to the house. No problems. The only one problem I've had is that if you order something from Amazon and it comes by Amazon shipment, no problems whatsoever. And Amazon will take a little uh, extra money for the import duties. And if they pay less, they'll refund it to you in a few weeks. If you order something from a company other than Amazon on Amazon, but it's shipped and comes from another company. Uh, if they use UPS, UPS will mess with you. That uh, 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 awning cover out there that I ordered, it was like $200. And Amazon um, took the shipping cost and Amazon charged me some duty for that. But when UPS brought it, the UPS driver wouldn't give it to me unless I paid the duty to him. I don't know if that's a scam or if it's just UPS or what it is. But I, I've had that in years past where UPS, not FedEx, not Estafeta, UPS, the drivers always want a little extra money. And they claim that it's a thing. And it's not just the driver. This You get an email from UPS itself that says you have to pay this duty. And you can do it in advance or you can pay it to the driver. But 
I don't like it. Anyway, I don't understand it. And if anything comes from UPS, um, it seems to be a problem. Uh, there was another question here that I wanted to talk about today. Oh, oh, if I remember right, you have to own property or a business in Mexico to be a permanent resident, right? Hopefully Lynn's plants will recover. Juan does excellent work. Yeah, agree with the last two. You do not have to own property or a business in Mexico to be a permanent resident. You do have to financially qualify, and that's around $2,500 per month per person, um, and it varies by the exchange rate at the time and which uh, Mexican consulate you're applying to at your uh, in your home country. So it varies, but $2,500 is a medium. Uh, price for what it takes in 2022 to qualify le uh, to be a legal permanent resident in Mexico financially. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about today was how much fun it is for me to run into people who recognize me here in Ajijic. And, uh, it's uh, it, it, it's my teeny, teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny little piece of being famous. <laughs> and it's it's very enjoyable for me. I'm at Walmart and somebody says, hey, JC, I watch your videos. It's a rewarding thing to have people um, express their appreciation. And so for those of you who have done that, thank you. And for those of you who might run into me, Please feel free to approach me. Um, I, I wanted to talk about that today in particular and how much I, I appreciate it and how sometimes it's a, a kind of a valuable thing to me. Um, I had trouble with my van this week and uh, I, the, I lost the serpentine belt and my, so I didn't have any power steering or cooling. And I was able to get it into the parking lot at Oxo. And uh, I stopped there because I wanted to get some paint. So I went and I got my paint and I came back to the van knowing that uh, I was going to have to get some help to get the van fixed. But as I started to put my paint in the van, I, I didn't have my keys, my, my car keys. So um, I, I had gone into the OXO and bought a bottle of water before I went to the paint store, kind of to establish that I was going to be a customer there since I'm parked right in front of their door. And I know that the van's going to be there for a while. So I went back in there looking for my keys and I didn't find my keys in the OXO and I didn't see them on the ground anywhere. And I traced my steps back to the paint store and thinking I, I must have left them in the paint store. I had um, I, I had gone and paid for my paint and they give you a receipt and I'd stuck it in my pocket. And when I was asked for the receipt to take my can, I was taking things out of my pocket and put them on the counter looking for the receipt. And sure enough, as I walked in, my keys were right there on the counter. So I kind of leaned past the lady who was the customer and said, uh, uh, these are uh, my keys. And as I turned to go, the lady said, hey, Jerry. <laughs> and it turns out that it's one of my uh, loyal subscribers. Anyway, in the ensuing conversation, uh, I asked her if she had a car and would give me a ride home, <laughs> which she did. And uh, she came home and she met Lynn and um, she's a very nice person and I think we made a friend. <laughs> but it's because of my YouTube channel and her recognizing me that in that very moment, as I quite often say, 
Um, the universe takes care of Jerry. Why did I leave my keys there? The universe takes care of Jerry. Well, another instance of being recognized, and this happens often, I was in the optometrist the other day, uh, waiting for him to finish up with the previous patient. And um, I, I had been there before, and I just needed him to sign off a form for my driver's license. And I'm applying for my driver's license, uh, my South Dakota driver's license, by mail. And uh, because of my age, I'm required to have an optometrist sign off on my eyesight. And sure enough, I qualify without glasses again. My vision is uh, 2030, which for uh, 76 years old seems to be acceptable to get a driver's license in South Dakota. Anyway, I'm sitting there waiting for him to, you know, stamp the form. Um, and uh, he comes out with the other customer and they're standing with their back to me. And as they finish, she turns and says, hi, Jerry. <laughs> so I'm standing out on the corner talking to her. This is in uh, downtown Ahihik. There's the plaza on that corner and the bank on that corner and the police station on that corner. We're standing on the fourth corner talking. And she's, you know, where are you from? All of that conversation, which is enjoyable for me to meet people. And uh, taxi cab goes by and a guy leans out the window and says, JC Travel Stories. Uh, anyway, great fun. But I went into the Donia's Donuts the other day. Well, this is a couple of weeks ago. And uh, as I'm walking in, I hear that thing. Hey, Jerry. So I turn, and it turns out to be Jim and Barbara of JB's Big Adventure, who it's another YouTube channel. Um, uh, some uh, A very nice couple who have recently recently compared to me i've been here like 20 years and they've been here like a year um uh who have another youtube channel and he makes some uh, valuable videos about um, retiring and living in mexico anyway uh i also recognized him because i do watch youtube and i look at uh, the other people who are making videos about mexico and ahihik and not because it's competition, but because um, I'm interested in what they have to say about the place as well as the rest of you. Also, if, uh, if they come up with a good idea, I might use it also. Anyway, uh, I sat and had a donut with them, and uh, we decided to do a video together. And we've done that now, and I'm just going to play a short clip of it for you so um yeah if you ask me where am i from i'm from south dakota <laughs> but if you ask lynn she'll probably say um uh, oregon okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. did you meet in south dakota or did you meet in oregon oh boy there's a story <laughs> we met in wyoming <laughs> or somebody says you know what i'm really fearful about moving over there because all I hear about is the cartel. Mm -hmm. And so some of our best videos were about the crime, comparing the crime here at Lake Chapala to the crime that happens in the States. Mm -hmm. And I've got folks that have said, you know what, I share those with my family. That way. So in bringing this video to a close, because obviously we could have a four hour conversation and nobody wants to necessarily live it. Well, can we shut the cameras off and just keep going? <laughs> <laughs> well, just a couple of clips from our nearly hour-long conversation. We had a lot of fun talking, and we uh, went through a whole range of different uh, conversations about our lives here. Uh, 
about the experience of retiring and living in Mexico, about the moving experience, about what you have to do to figure out to do that, and what you find when you get here. We also have uh, conversations about uh, our experiences as YouTube creators and making videos for you. Uh, anyway, go and check it out. Uh, I'm not posting the video uh, all uh, 50 minutes of it on my channel, but um, I think uh, you'll enjoy what you see on JB's Big Adventure. Check it out. And thanks for watching me today. We appreciate you. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.